Hi everyone. Well, there's been a lot of new information released about the middle bridge that was closed over the Blue Mesa Reservoir on April 18th of this year. That was due to the discovery of some cracks in the welds for this T1 steel, this specialty steel that was used from 1959 to 1978. And I'll get into some more of that detail. The purpose of this video is to give you the updated information and timelines for when this bridge is going to be reopened and what it's going to take to, to get it that way. Now we can see this is a stretch of road between Gunnison, Colorado and Montrose, Colorado. This road closure has caused detour routes to take anywhere from six to seven hours. So there's been major impacts to the local communities on either side of this bridge. So let's jump right into what's going on most recently as far as the news from Colorado DOT. They're gonna repair this bridge by adding sections of steel plate to span across areas of cracks that they've discovered in this detailed inspection. The bridge was closed on April 18th as part of scheduled inspection work that was required by Federal Highways Administration. It was my understanding that all the states had to complete this testing by March of 2024. So it seems that Colorado may be a bit behind here, but uh, they're certainly in hyperdrive mode now to get this bridge reopened. So I'm gonna go through some of the details associated with this repair and again, how this is likely to all play out. So we can just see the, the view of in purple, the locations where these splice plates are gonna be added. This is the location of the crack that was discovered on April 18th that caused the bridge closure. Right now that bridge is closed in both directions. Now here's the location of all the defects that they found in the structural steel for this bridge. They found 183 cracks or defects they couldn't accept or continue without some type of remediation, which again is gonna be these addition of these splice plates but a total of 118 of these 183 defects actually have to be repaired. Now, Federal Highways has a guide that takes people step-by-step step through the process of what it takes to make field repairs of structural steel for bridges. Colorado DOT has announced that they've completed their inspection of the middle bridge here, and now they're moving into repair mode. And this is really slow going work. I mean, that's to be expected when you have to get up close and examine individual sections of this steel. So they've had to erect these work platforms so they can access all sides of the steel that need to be inspected and repaired. This work's being done by Keywood Infrastructure. And this inspection work involves grinding off the coating, the paint, exposing the area of interest, and then performing ultrasonic testing. So this is a very time consuming process, but the good news is at least according to Colorado DOT, they're done with their main inspections of this middle bridge in both directions. As I mentioned in the previous video, there's a variety of non-destructive test methods that can be used to assess structural steel for bridges. And the method that they've apparently elected to use is ultrasonic testing, which again is a hands-on test. You're looking for essentially cracks or other defects so you get a different signal of that part of the weld as, as opposed to the remaining parts of the weld. So they'll use the same scaffolding system to do the repair work. Now apparently Kiewit has procured 80 tons of steel for this repair. It's gonna be two and a half inch thick steel plates that are 30 inches wide and 27 feet long. And if they're following ASHO, typically these plates will be bolted in, into position across the repair zone. Also, let me jump in here real quick. Uh, I always forget to point this out or point it out well into the video. I do have a link in the description for a free digital download of the biggest civil engineering disasters of the past 100 years that I've put together. And while you're down there, if you like this kind of content, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. So let's get back to it. This is a photo from that Ashto manual of what a plate repair looks like on a, a different bridge but you can see that these plates are bolted into place. So you have to drill holes in the steel, attach the plate, and then bolt the plate into position. And these plating repairs often are done to address section loss in a structural steel member, but in this case, they're being used to address, from what I understand, uh, defects in the structural steel. 
and this is caused mostly by the welding process. It's called uh, hydrogen embrittlement. Some people call it hydrogen cracking for short. I know some people objected to that term, but that is a commonly used term. The type of steel that they used, this T1 high strength steel, was prone to this hydrogen embrittlement, which caused cracking. And often these cracks existed at the time of construction and only got bigger throughout time due to cyclic loading, you know, traffic going over the bridge year in and year out. Now, if it wasn't for this T1 steel, in some cases they might have considered welding these plates into position. That's really not an option here from what I understand, so they're going with the bolted plates for the repair. Now, I did some digging. I found some FHWA guidance on this T1 bridge steel, and they made the state's inventory all their bridges that was constructed of the steel, and when this memo was issued about three years ago, it indicated that Colorado had five of these bridges that were made of T1 steel. Although I noticed in the CDOT update, they indicate there's only one other bridge that has this T1 steel, which is a bridge immediately to the west of the middle bridge across uh, Blue Mesa Reservoir. And they're getting ready to start the inspections of that bridge. So for this T1 steel, as it's called, has a variety of other names, ASTM A514, grade 100 steel, quenched and tempered steel, high strength steel, heat treated steel, or some combination of these terms. This steel was made by US Steel Corporation and was implemented by their American Bridge Division. I've done a number of deep foundation testing projects for American Bridge and come to think of it, Keywood infrastructure for that matter too. Although I'm not involved with this project whatsoever. So to get an idea here, we're talking about the middle bridge at this location and they're gonna start the inspection of the West Bridge to see if there's similar cracks in the structural steel supporting that bridge. Here's just a Google view of what this area looks like. So let's get into the repair plan. They're, they've completed their inspections for the middle bridge. They're jumping in to install these plates. To do this, they're gonna do it one lane at a time. And when they get all the steel on one lane of the bridge repaired, they'll open up traffic to a single lane. And so they'll route people from one direction to the next through uh, using pilot vehicles, pilot cars. I'm sure you've experienced this, whether it was even a paving job or some other construction job where the road was closed down to one lane. And so let's say you were wanting to go west, you might have to wait for 15, 20 minutes while the eastbound traffic is being escorted across. And then once they clear, the pilot vehicle swings back around and leads the people going westbound. So it's better than having the bridge closed altogether and having a six or seven hour detour, but it is gonna slow people down. There's gonna be backups. But again, it's better than the alternative, which is right now uh, no passage of vehicles across this bridge. And CDOT and Kiwit infrastructure, they're hoping that they can get the middle bridge open to one lane of traffic by the 4th of July and complete repairs to the other lane of the bridge by late fall of 2024. Now, the thing that occurs to me is CDOT was conducting this inspection of the middle bridge back in well, March, April timeframe for what I understand, but the discovery on April 18th caused them to close the bridge because they found a crack during this inspection. Hopefully that won't be the case for the West Bridge. The middle bridge is 1500 foot long and the West Bridge is 900 feet long. Similar design, similar material. And so that would be the other shoe to drop if, if it were to drop is that they discover something that causes them to have to close the entire bridge. And hopefully it won't come to that because otherwise they'll be right back in the situation they are in right now. So as I mentioned, CDOT has had a lot of good updates on their website. There's also been some great local reporting from the Montrose Press and the Colorado Sun. So there's a lot of good information. I'll put uh, links in the description to those news sources as well as the CDOT website. So let's hope this goes well, that they're able to get at least one lane of traffic opened over the middle bridge by the 4th of July, that they don't discover any more cracks or any cracks for that matter on the West Bridge, and that they can get both lanes of traffic open across the middle bridge by the end of this year. 
You know, that's a little bit longer than the time frame that I had uh, laid out based on similar retrofits across the country in recent uh, years. However, I think the amount of cracking here seems to be such that it is just going to take that much more time. And I believe they're really pushing hard to get this local traffic moving freely again. So I want to thank uh, the channel members, really supports the channel and helps me continue to do these types of updates. I also want to send a shout out to those of you who have provided super thanks. And of course, those of you who have liked, subscribed and left comments, that's another way to support the channel. So thanks very much and please stay tuned for future videos.